early 1900s, essentially. They put a rock diversion in. And as part of the deal then, the Bureau did the capital investments and the irrigators are responsible for the maintenance. So this rock diversion was kind of a porous and somewhat temporary thing in that it's there permanently, but that had to be maintained to keep it there because of floods and ice. And so they built a tramway across it so the irrigators could drop rock in it every year that they needed to. That was actually good for fish because it created conditions periodically that opened the river up. And so most fish species could pass up and down stream at times through that structure. Um, and that's why the Yellowstone's been called an undammed river because that wasn't really a hard dam. That was kind of a porous structure. Pallid sturgeon though are very benthic fish. They swim right along the bottom. They don't have real strong swimming speeds um, and they could not pass it. Pallid sturgeon has been listed as an endangered species by the Fish and Wildlife Service. And they're a long-lived species. They live 60 to 80 years and they haven't essentially reproduced for 50 to 60 years. So time's running out for them. Agreements have been made between the, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, which essentially administers the Endangered Species Act, the Army Corps of Engineers, which operates Fort Peck Dam, and the Bureau of Reclamation, which operates intake. And what they agreed to do is have the Army Corps help the Bureau with some money that was basically allocated through Congress to help pallid sturgeon passage at intake. And so that is what essentially has led to this intake dam project. Through the course of this project, they've come up with many different alternatives and how to pass pallid sturgeon. The one they picked is what's called a bypass channel that includes a hard cap, basically a concrete cap, two feet higher on the existing structure to make it essentially an impervious structure. They plan on putting a slot in it to try and allow for some fish passage and then a bypass channel to provide for upstream passage. The problem is, is that there's really been no evidence anywhere that sturgeon as a, as a group can use bypass channels, will use bypass channels. And so there's a lot of uncertainty as to whether this bypass channel is gonna work. And, and what really concerns me, and the, env um, the environmentalists and the, the scientists are getting a bad rap, I think, in some ways, because the irrigators and the Bureau of Reclamation is saying we're being obstructionists. And in fact, what could happen is the Fish and Wildlife Service could hold the Bureau and the irrigators responsible for providing passage if this bypass channel doesn't provide passage. And so I'm actually very concerned that the irrigators and, and, the, and the Bureau of Rec, we as, as U.S. citizens, taxpayers, are going to be on the hook for this if it doesn't work. And so what we've been urging folks is let's maybe spend a little more money up front for something we're sure is gonna work rather than spend some money now, $60 million now for something that may work. I mean, I hope it does. If, if they go with this, I hope it works. But I think there's a lot of uncertainty as to whether it's gonna work. And the reason for that is there's no proof that this kind of thing has worked anywhere else. And, and, and the draft EIS, even says that. And so I'm really concerned that um, this isn't going to work. We're going to be stuck in five to 10 years saying, yikes, this didn't work. Now what do we do? And in the meantime, pallid sturgeon may in fact go extinct. Right now, the preferred alternative in the draft EIS by the Bureau and the Corps is to put a concrete in the Yellowstone River, to basically dam the Yellowstone River and to put a bypass channel in. That is the preferred alternative. And unless they change their mind between this draft EIS and the final EIS, that's what will happen. And so we will see a dam on the Yellowstone River. That's what will happen, unless it changes. The only way it's gonna change is people to get mad and, and, and make it change. And, we, and, and to support spending some more money up front because you, you'll pay now or you'll pay later is the way I look at it. And I think you'll pay more later.